Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about what is it costing you to put off leveraging and using speaking as your best form of marketing? Because what I know is that every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And in this case, you may be saying yes to staying safe, yes to playing small, yes to waiting, and no to speaking. So that's what we're going to be diving deeper into on this episode. So let's get on to the show. You're listening to Be In Demand, the podcast for honest advice, inspiring stories, and ideas for growing your business by leveraging the expert that you are. I'm your host, Loria Mirabito, business mentor, and I'm also a reformed, painfully shy girl, red wine lover, and exercise enthusiast. Join me as I share how being positioned as the expert in your industry, even if it's a busy one, will help you stand out and be the one in demand to hire and work with. So just like the title implies, I mean, we are putting off, this is what I see, you know, putting off leveraging speaking events. And when we do that, we really are just saying no to our audience. I mean, I have an interesting story about how I, how I finished writing my second book. And I had written the first book and writing a book is not a small task. There's a lot of steps that are involved in it. And if it's something that you're interested in, definitely reach out to me. I am happy to share with you the process and the philosophy that I have about writing a book. So I had half written my second book, Rethink Your Leadership. And I just didn't finish it. And it was just like, I really was so, when I look back on this, I really was focused on the work that I was putting into this. And I spoke at a big event and everybody got a copy of my first book that was in the audience. And they actually had a lot that were left over and they gave those out to other people who weren't attending. And I got this lovely email from somebody who said to me, your speech and your book changed my life. And she went on to explain how. I was so touched by this email, so touched that I was like, I am doing a disservice to my audience by not finishing the second book. And that's what got me to finish that second book. And I am so happy that I that I finished it because I did get called back by that very same company and they gave away copies of my book. And this time they were able to give away copies of the second book. So the first thing about saying no to speaking, you're saying no to efficiency. I mean, you are writing social media posts, I'm sure, because most online businesses are. Most in-person businesses are. We are writing social media posts. We are making people aware that we're around. But here's the thing. You are hoping that the right person is going to see your posts. You are hoping, praying that they're actually going to read your post. And you are hoping that they actually respond, whether they like it, they make a comment, they reach finally reach out to you and book a call so that they can hire someone like you to start solving the problem that they have. So efficiency goes out the window. The other thing that you're saying no to regarding efficiency is speaking to a group of ideal clients, a group of prospects. Because everybody who raises their hand, whether it's a high-end mastermind, it's a membership, it's a meeting, a conference, a summit, everybody has raised their hand to say, you know what? I want to be there. I like this topic. I want to hear more from this person. I've been thought maybe they've been following you on Instagram or so, some other form of social media. And then it's just like, wow, they see your name somewhere. It's like, I want to go there. Or maybe they don't even know who you are, but they're interested in the topic that you're talking about. You are saying no to a group of people who've either spent money or are spending time with you in that same room. So just think about that. You know, social media and working with the algorithm is one thing, but then being in a room full of prospects who can either hire you hire you later 
because maybe they're not ready. Maybe they're not, their pain's not at that point yet, or they can refer you to other people. They can refer you to people that they know would benefit from your services. So that's the other part of efficiency. And it's also extremely cost-effective. It's the most organic marketing you can ever do for your business or your personal brand. No Facebook ads, no Instagram ads, no boosting posts needed or required. Because again, you're building that know, like, and trust with that audience that's right there. And they are going to fall in love with you. Now, I can say that they're going to fall in love with you because I know that from the clients that I've worked with and how I share with them, like how to get up there and be prepared as a speaker, you know, your audience will can't help but fall in love with you. So efficiency is one of the things that you are saying no to when you say yes to staying small or whatever your reason is for not wanting to leverage speaking opportunities. The second one is credibility. Not being the speaker, you are not leveraging credibility because when you're the speaker, you have instant credibility. You know, there is not a meeting planner or a conference organizer in the world who would h- randomly hire like, oh yeah, like you look good. One of, yeah, I don't know. Like, oh, how long you, you oh, you, you don't even know about this stuff. Hey, like get on up there and talk to my audience. No meeting planner or conference organizer would ever do that. One, if they are actually, um, a paid, like it's their, it's their job versus a volunteer for an organization that would be like ruining your career. And if you're a volunteer meeting planner, conference organizer, you're on the committee, you know, you're not going to pick this awful person because what's that going to say about you? I mean, like meeting planners, conference organizers, they're always looking for the right person to put in front of their audience. So because of that, The audience knows that they trust their meeting planner. They trust the people that they have hired to put this conference together. They trust the people who are on the board for this particular event. You know, so there's that trust that already cut like trust from somebody else. And they're putting you in front of the audience. You know, one of the things that I love to ask audiences is, how many people have heard me speak before? You know, and sometimes like a couple of hands will go up. Um, But I'll also ask how many of you looked me up first before deciding to attend this particular meeting? And almost every hand in the room goes up. Now, I share that with you to emphasize the, the point that, you know, people are busy, So they can't just, oh, let me just like go to this meeting or this conference because I've nothing. Are you ready to leverage speaking as your best form of marketing? There are over 7,500 events looking for speakers every single day. Speaking positions you as the expert in the room, but you probably don't know where to start. So I created this great resource called the Directory of Places to Speak. This resource will help you get started today. So head on over to speakandstandout.com forward slash directory to grab your free copy now. Don't miss this opportunity to be the expert speaking to audiences filled with your ideal clients. Nothing else to do. I mean, people are investing large sums of money to hop on airplanes, you know, hotel rooms, you know, car rentals, Ubers, you know, to go to in-person events. But even if it's an event that's like being hosted online, I still have to clear out my schedule. Maybe I need to get a sitter, somebody to watch the children. I have to ask a spouse like, hey, I'm going to be online from this time to this time. I need you to be able to. So people are paying with their time and also with their dollars. That's how they, that, that is how we vote today, basically, is with our time and with our dollars. So it is not only efficient, you know, it is not only like instant credibility and you have a story to tell people, you know, but more on that in a little bit. 
The third thing that you were saying no to by not leveraging speaking opportunities is social proof. You have a fabulous opportunity to actually get on social and talk about the event before you even get there. Yes, this is something that I do all the time, as for, more for public events than for private events, because it builds up that excitement. Like somebody might like, oh, I didn't know she was speaking at that event. Let me check that out. But also it lets other people know who are following me. I didn't know she was a speaker. I mean, in my case, I people know that this is what I do. But for you, you know, if you're if you're not leveraging speaking, you know, like this is a great way actually to get more speaking events even easier because you're talking about an event that you're about to speak at, that you're about to attend, you know, whether it's live, whether it's in, you know, live and in person or whether it's virtual, you know, you get to talk about it. And I would encourage you also to talk about like drop some hints about what you're going to be sharing with that audience. Again, if a meeting planner, a conference organizer, somebody who's on a committee either right now or they could be in the future is going to hear you, is going to remember that, and they may want to hire you in the future. So there's some social proof that you can use beforehand. Then after the event, talk about it. Get onto social. Mention it in like posts. Do a story on it. I, if you're following me or over on Instagram, you'll see me do this a lot. I will be a guest on someone's podcast and like talk about it afterwards, letting people know like, hey, I'll let you know when this goes live. But as a speaker, you can be like talking about this is what went well. These are some of the stories that I told. This is some of the feedback that I've already heard. Here's an email that I already got or a DM that I just got from somebody, you know, being able to share that information afterwards, again, if you're not speaking, these are things that you are saying no to. Another thing that you can get is, you know, regarding social proof is you can get some video, you can get some photographs, you can get testimonials, you can get referrals to other events. And if you're new and doing an in-person event, I would recommend that you at request a wireless handheld microphone. That way the pictures and the video, you are holding the microphone and you won't be mistaken as somebody who's in the audience who might be asking a question to the speaker. So that's just a little pro tip as you're getting started. But you then can put all of these pictures, you know, and video on your social, on your website. Again, it's just more social proof. And if somebody is, seeing you with a microphone in front of an audience, they're going to like they're, a picture is worth a thousand words. And they're going to know that you are a speaker. They don't have to go to your bio or to your website to figure out if you're a speaker. They're going to see the pictures and they're just going to know that you are a speaker. The fourth thing that you are missing out on is revenue. And I'm not just talking about the revenue that where you get paid up front, where you get paid to speak at this event, this conference, although that is very, very nice. As you've probably like heard me say, getting paid on the back end, that's where you can make a lot more money. Now, I have had clients who have hired me right away from hearing me speak, from seeing me on stage. They have reached out and they're just like, Hey, how do I how do I work with you? Or they just book a call right away. And why is that? Is because of that I had built that instant credibility and that no like and trust. And I can tell you from those clients who have hired me from the audience, from that was the first time that they were ever, they ever met me, they were ever exposed to me. They actually hung around for a long time. As a matter of fact, they re-enrolled again and again and again. Some of them I actually worked with for years because it was always, let's work on this next and then this, you know. I have done some, as you know, like I've come from the executive coaching. So I have worked with people on their leadership and also career transitions from one place to another, but also people have hired me for speaking, you know, to become a speaking coach because they saw me speak. 
And so many of my clients routinely step off the stage to people handing them business cards. Now, this is what I call that spinoff business, handing them business cards saying, please call me. I need to work with you. Please call me. I have a meeting or an event that I'm on the committee for, that I'm in charge of, that I'm looking for speakers for. Lots of different reasons that they get handed business cards. I mean, they it's spinoff business, you know, and then it's, well, what happens at those events? I mean, it's like the, you know, like that telephone game. Um, well, I don't think the telephone game is the right analogy, but it's like, one person hears you and then that turns into two events and those two events each turn into two events. So that there's another four events. I mean, it's just like, it goes on and on and on. And this is why I say that speaking is the gift that keeps on giving. And the last point I want to make is time. Now, time is something that none of us have too much of. None of us have enough time and none of us know how much time we have. So time is one of those things. And as much as this is very similar to the first one about efficiency, time, how much time is passing by until you feel like you're worthy, until you feel like you're good enough, till you feel like you know enough that you can get up in front of an audience and start sharing. Trust me, what you're doing is you are moving the goalpost farther and farther away. Every time that you get close enough, oh, I've, I'm almost finished this certificate. You move the goalpost again. Well, I need this other one. I'm not quite there yet. Basically, what's happening is I'm hearing you say, I'm afraid. And it's okay to be afraid and still say yes. That is exactly how I accidentally became a speaker is I said yes before I was ready. So time, don't let time slip away. And it's also a fabulous way to impact more people. You know, when you look at like, how much time do I have well, if I, if I say yes to speaking, then I am saying yes to impacting more people's lives. I'm saying yes to sharing my story, yes to sharing the solutions so that the people that are in the audience don't have to go through all the stuff that I went through to figure all this out. You can actually help people shortcut their success to get from point A to point B. And again, they'll probably end up hiring you. Now you can build your business one social media post at a time. You can build your business one coffee chat at a time, one sample session at a time. I just want you to know that there's another way to build and scale your business. And that is through speaking. It is so efficient. You get instant credibility, social proof, efficiency. Did I already like say efficiency? It's just like, you know, from listening to me, you can build your business one social media post at a time. You can build your business one coffee chat at a time. You can build your business one sample session at a time. But I just want you to know that there is another way, a more efficient way that gives you credibility, that helps you build that know, like, and trust. If you've been hanging around me with any amount of time, then you've probably heard me say, speaking is the fastest way to grow your business. Speaking is the fastest way to have impact on others. And if this is something that is calling to you, if you feel like there is a voice inside of you that says, you know what, I need to impact more. I need to, I need to help more people. I need to tell my story and I'm tired of being on the wrong side of the room. Instead of, I don't need to be in the audience, I should be on stage. If you feel that way and you are ready to say yes to speaking, then I want to encourage you to book a call with me. I have a couple of different programs and one of them might be perfect for you, but we won't know until you and I get on a call and we have a conversation. I will share with you the different programs that I have so that you make the right choice for your business and you right now. 
So till next time, I hope that you will uh, keep listening. Please leave me a five-star review if you feel I, I've earned it um, so that the more reviews, the more people this podcast will reach, the more people that I can help, the more people that I can serve. And by you leaving a review, you're basically saying thank you and you are helping me help more people. So please do that if you haven't had an opportunity yet. And until next time, please go be in demand.